Thursday Night Tailgate, where the spotlight is always on the positive. Tune in Thursday night from 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern Time to hear your favorite NFL legends, players, and coaches sharing their stories. Now back to Chris and Bob. I wouldn't joke about anything else that happens here tonight. All right, now joining us on the Kyvin Foods guest line is former Pro Bowl quarterback Gus Farratt. Let me give you some background on Gus. He's from Catanning, Pennsylvania, which is 44 miles northeast of my hometown of Pittsburgh along the Allegheny River. In high school, he lettered in football, baseball, and basketball, played his college ball at Tulsa, where he remains sixth in all-time passing yards and ninth in touchdown passes. His nearly 3,000 yards passing his senior season were the most by a Tulsa quarterback in nearly three decades. He was a seventh-round draft pick in 1994 by the Washington Redskins, and he played in the NFL from 94 to 2008 for the Redskins, Lions, Broncos, Bengals, Vikings, Dolphins, and Rams. Over the course of his NFL career, he threw for just over 21,000 yards and 114 touchdowns. He was named to the Pro Bowl in 1996 when he threw for nearly 3,500 yards under North Turner and led the Redskins to their first winning season in the post-Joe Gibbs era. And we are glad to have Gus with us tonight here on Thursday Night Tailgate. Hey, Gus, Chris, and Bob, thanks for joining us tonight. Hi, Gus. Yeah, hi, fellas. Thanks for having me on. So, Gus, I wanted to start by going back to your time in college. As a guy from right right outside of Pittsburgh, how did Pitt miss out on having you play there versus uh, you ending up at Tulsa? You know, it's funny. I never got recruited by Pitt. I got recruited by Penn State to play linebacker, which everybody gets recruited by Penn State to play linebacker. Uh, <laughs> we had a coach who, who actually went to Penn State. He was the offensive line coach. Uh, his name was Mark Thomas. He coached at Tulsa. And he recruited our area very heavily, and I graduated with with many, many guys from Western Pennsylvania at the University of Tulsa in Oklahoma. So it was a great experience. It was a home away from home because of so many people there, and it was a great experience for me. And guess as I was sort of looking back over your, you know, your college game stats, you know, your first start, it looked like, you know, came after uh, TJ Rubley got hurt and you faced Oklahoma, sort of a welcome to college football, son. So, you know, here here you go up against one of the top uh, football programs in the country. What was that like for you? Um, I'm sure my eyes were pretty big at that point. Um, you know, that coming in, I can remember when he got hurt and I came in against Arkansas and played and then, you know, you're playing against these big teams and you come from a small school like uh, Fort City High School in, in Pennsylvania, like you said, outside of Pittsburgh. And my senior year, we had 19 kids on my team. So that was a big change for me, <laughs> but it was a lot of fun. Uh, we got to throw the ball around a lot. Coach Rader did an outstanding job. I think we ran a spread before the spread was popular and um, just really enjoyed my time there. And, you know, I had a real surreal moment this summer. I was coaching at the Hall of Fame Academy uh, over in Canton this summer and coaching a couple quarterbacks. And the one kid I recognized the name, I said, your dad isn't TJ. He said, yeah, my dad's TJ Rubley. And uh, so I was coaching TJ's son at the Hall of Fame wow. Academy this summer. So it was, it was it was all a surreal moment, brought everything back really fast. Yeah, so after a couple of seasons, uh, you know, backing him up, you, you got your chance to start, and in, in 93, you really took off. You threw for almost 3,000 yards, 21 touchdowns. You and Chris Penn seemed to kind of, you know, kind of match up really well, became a tremendous duo. What made the two of you guys so successful together? You know what? He, he just was relentless, and uh, he ran excellent routes, and he understood the game. We could put him in any position. We moved him all around the field to get the best matchups. And, uh, you know, I threw every route possible to him. And I was blessed with the strong arm, and he was blessed with the God-given ability to catch my passes that were all over the place. And um, so we just, you know, we just had a good relationship. Chris was a quiet, hardworking kid and just loved football just like I did. And, and we just had a connection um, out on the field that, you know, you kind of football players have sometimes, and it was a lot of fun. Bob, questions for Gus? Hi, Gus. Uh, you, you just mentioned about your uh, being recruited as a linebacker, and you were one of those very early big quarterbacks, Gus, and, and now they seem to be all your size coming up, a lot of them anyway. But uh, tell me more about uh, you playing linebacker in high school. Did you have that kind of size back then, and uh, when did you make – well, you probably went both ways, I would imagine. Well, you know what's funny, uh, Bob, is that in ninth grade, I, I, I played in eighth grade. That was the first time I ever played football. 
in ninth grade, I came out, was going through the preseason, and I tackled somebody with my head down and broke my neck. And um, I crushed the fourth vertebrae, and I didn't play football for two years. So my junior year, I started to play again um, and was playing some safety and, and some uh, cornerback and was really kind of careful what I was doing. My senior year was much more aggressive on defense. I was a, you know, I was a big kid and, and I was, I was six, four, 205 pounds. And, and, uh, you know, like I tell kids all the time, if, if you have the size, teams will take a chance on you because that's one thing they can't coach. They can't coach you to be bigger. Uh, and so I was blessed with that and I was lucky enough to, to overcome some injuries. And I just did not, you know, once I started playing quarterback, I loved it. I could throw it. And uh, that's what I really wanted to do. So that made my mind up of, you know, not really wanting to go to Penn State, but somewhere that they wanted me to play quarterback and throw the football. And Gus, when you arrived in Washington, your first NFL coach, Norv Turner, uh, has always had that offensive guru moniker to him. Uh, tell me more about his system how you got along with them, and uh, was the system difficult to master? Um, I thought it was a great system. That's still my favorite system. After playing 15 years in the NFL, seven different teams and a ton of different coordinators, being in the West Coast, the digit, and hybrids of all those, um, I still love Coach Turner's the best. I love the digit system for its simplicity, understanding it, the route tree. Um, you know, when, if you're getting a safety blitz, Somebody's got to adjust. And it was really, you know, because the system was big throws, big 20-plus yard throws, comebacks, you know, posts, those types of things. And and it was a lot of fun to play in that system. And I, I give Coach Turner a lot of credit. He was great at being able to understand when the defense was going to blitz, when they're playing coverage, and all the, and when they're playing man. And we, we ended up calling a lot of the plays correctly. So Coach Turner was a great play caller, and I, I really enjoyed it my time playing with him. Coach Turner was, you know, he tried to have fun with the, with the guy, with the quarterback and, and make some jokes with us. And, but you know, there was just coach Turner was just, he was a ball coach. You know, that's what he was. That's what he was good at. And he tried to communicate with us and uh, we got along the best we could. And Gus, you know, like I mentioned in your intro, you were a seventh round pick in 94 by the Redskins. That was North Turner's first season there as head coach, but, you know, at the top of the draft, they take Heath Shuler, right? Number one in the, or in the, in the first round, third right. overall selection. Were you drafted? Were you, were you happy just to be drafted or were you disappointed kind of figuring, boy, this is going to be hard to make this team when they drafted this kid in the first round? Uh, well, gr- growing up where I grew up um, and being with my family and friends and everybody that was with me during the draft, I really had no idea where I was going to be drafted. I was the fifth quarterback taken overall, but it wasn't until the seventh round. And, uh, you know, I was just happy to be drafted. At that point, I was like, hey, let's, let me go somewhere. If not, I'm going to go, be a, you know, and try my best. And, and even though Heath Schuler was drafted number one overall, I went there. I gave him my all. I practiced every day, stayed late, threw more, did whatever I had to do to make the team, was able to do that. And then, you know, with Heath holding out, uh, uh, for his contract, it just let me get all the reps and it let me uh, get way ahead of where Heath was. And just, you know, being a quarterback that comes from Western PA and having the toughness, nothing really bothered me and was able to make the throws and, and uh, put the ball, you know, had a lot to learn about the game still and uh, still never figured it out after 15 years. It's a, it's a very inter- intricate game and it's a lot of fun and and, um, you know, I just I just really thank the Redskins for drafting me in the seventh round because it was a dream come true. Was there any internal pressure that you were aware of because of where they drafted Schuler and because he was a first-round pick to, to take him over you, even though you know, it was probably looking like you were going to be the guy and you were, like you said, you got the reps and you were making the throws and all of that sort of thing. But was there any internal pressure to go with Schuler anyway, even because of where he was drafted? Oh, I'm sure there was. I mean, it comes down to money. I mean, that's what the league is a business. It's a game that we love to play, but it's a business for owners and coaches and, and other general managers. And, and, you know, they gave Heath Schuller the money. Uh, they said he had the potential to do this and we're going to invest in him and, and they're going to give him every opportunity to go out and prove himself and which is, which is the right thing to do. 
And uh, being an underdog and being that way my whole career, I just had to keep continually proving myself every time I stepped on the football field. I guess as I sort of looked at you know, like your game stats once you got into into the NFL, your second career 300-yard passing game came in the last game of the season in '96 in a win at home against the Cowboys. And you know, not only did it you know get you a win, but it got you guys over 500. You end up making you know being nine and seven that year, so it was the first winning season in the post Joe Gibbs era. How big was that win for you and for the team? Well, anytime the Redskins beat the Cowboys, it's a big win. So, um, you know, one of my favorite things about Washington was when getting to play the Cowboys at RFK, the bleachers bouncing, you know, the fans, the band, the Hoggettes, and, and uh, everything else. I mean, those are memories that, that I'll have forever, and it was just an extraordinary experience. And, uh, you know, that just was, you know, for North Turner to, to win nine games that year and for our team to, to come from a, you know, a piecemeal team that was put together in 94 and, and starting to put the pieces together. We felt really good about where we were and, and uh, we had some great leadership on that team and just really had a great experience and enjoyed my time that year in 96. Bob, a couple more for Gus before we let him go. Sure. Gus, uh, you mentioned RFK. I wanted to ask you more about that. I was there once, Gus. I, I cut my teeth basically following the Redskins against teams of 70s, 80s, Jurgensen and Kilmer and Larry Brown and Monk. And it was just incredible. And, and some of the guys that have come through there, RFK Stadium, I think your first three years were spent there. You mentioned the Hogs and everything. And, and when we think of franchises, Gus, we think of Green Bay and Soldier Field. I don't think RFK gets the credit it deserved as far as being one of the uh, old places that was – electric. Uh, talk more about that because that place, when it was rocking, it was something to behold. It really was. It was probably, it still is, and always will be my favorite stadium to ever play in. I've played in all, almost all the stadiums in the NFL, being able to play in, on so many different teams. And uh, that stadium, just, just the atmosphere and electricity, when you play those rivals, when you would play the Eagles, and then the Cardinals would come in town. I mean, that's back when we still played Arizona. Um, and the Cowboys would come in town. Those games were huge. The town was electric. And uh, the people really enjoyed themselves. And I don't know how many people have ever been to RFK, but when that crowd gets going and, and you see a full set of bleachers bomping off the ground, um, it, it, just, it just gets you fired up to go out and win for your city and win for your team and give it everything you have. And so I'm sure that all those past Redskins that played there um, probably had the same experience. And, and uh, you know, I, I understand why you got to build new stadiums to get more people in and everything, but just mm -hmm. that place and the atmosphere and the closed quarters, uh, it was just an outstanding place to play. And finally, Gus, my, one of my favorite players ever was a teammate of yours, Brian Mitchell, and the, only because this guy was probably in history one of the more versatile offensive guys that ever uh, played uh, were you amazed at how many things this guy could do including quarterbacking yeah he could do it all I mean I mean that's that's what the NFL is it's special players who go out and prove themselves every week and and what was great about Brian he could prove himself in almost all positions special teams receiver running back quarterback you name it and uh, that, that guy could do it B Mitch was an outstanding player was a great leader and uh, was one of the pieces of the puzzle that, that we had that 96 year that really kept us together. And, and, and you know, B. Metz was a great teammate and uh, loved playing with him. And, and this was an outstanding guy on third down. And, and when, whenever you needed him, he was there and he could do it all, like you said. And, and uh, I could see why he was one of your favorite players. Gus, you're now the VP of Brain Performance Initiatives for a company called RC21X. Talk about what you're doing now. Yeah, I really love what I'm doing now. I retired in 08 and became a high school head coach. I got to coach Ezekiel Elliott in, in high school, so that was an experience. Mm. But then found I wanted to get out, out into the real world a little more and kind of, you know, when you coach high school ball, it's great. You get to change young men's lives, but I was only changing a few at a time. I wanted to do something that I could do all the time and affect a bunch of people. So everybody has a brain. They've been given the greatest system ever created and uh with our company rc21x we've built a tool that you can play on any mobile device it's called roberto 
we're named after the great Roberto Clemente uh, because we wanted to name our tool and our company after somebody who did things for other people and helped other people. Roberto died taking aid to um, uh, an earthquake ravaged uh, country, Nicaragua, and uh, when his plane went down. So we're named after him. His son, Roberto Jr., is one of our ambassadors. And we have created a tool that you can monitor your brain performance um, every day if you want, uh, every week. Uh, you can play it on any mobile device, and everybody can go to robertoapp.com and, and check it out and really understand where you are in your life. It doesn't matter. Our tool will, will um, let you get your profile from ages 6 to 106. Uh, there's a 15-day free trial right now when you sign on. So for me as a concerned parent, I wish I would have had it when my kids were playing football. I could have watched their brain performance and seen what was happening in their life. It doesn't matter if it's low sleep, if they uh, have a bad diet, if they're playing sports and they bump their head, or, or even our kids, all of our kids were crazy. They, they climbed trees. They fell out of trees. Anything can happen, and if you can understand what their brain performance is doing, it's something that we've never been able to monitor. And with our app, Roberto, we can monitor your brain performance and let you know where you are and hopefully let you make better decisions and get your life on the right track where you want it to be. Wow. That's fantastic stuff, Gus. Good for you guys. And again, it's robertoapp.com. Gus, let our listeners know how they can stay up to date with uh, all the great things you're doing and follow you over social media. Oh, yeah. I'm on uh, – um, if you go to Victory, uh, you can follow me on, on Twitter, at Gus Farratt. I'm also also with a company out of Toronto called Victory. Uh, they just put a link up to my uh, – I have also have a fan website. And uh, I just did a whole story on my hometown growing up in Fort City, Pennsylvania. They recently closed our high school and combined with another high school and, and went back and did a story on that. And so people can just find me at Gus Barad on social media, whether it's Facebook, Twitter, um, on Instagram. And, uh, you know, just – I just like to put everything up and I want everybody to understand their own brains and, and really be able to monitor themselves and make better decisions because we're all peak performers in life and we under, want to understand where our limited resource is and let's, let's go out and, and create a better, better you. And that's what we want to do. And so I really appreciate you guys having me on. It's been great to talk about Roberto and RC21X and, uh, you know, and, and my career. And I really appreciate you guys having me on iHeartRadio. Ah, we appreciate it very much, Gus. We hope you'll come back and do it again sometime. It's been a great, you know, it's been great having you as part of the show. Yeah, thank you so much. And, um, you know, everybody wants me to sign now as HTTR, so hell to the Redskins. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Take care, Gus. All the best to you and your family. Thank Thanks, you. Chris. Thanks, Bob. Appreciate it. Good night. That is uh, former Pro Bowl quarterback Gus Farratt. And, uh, again, their name of the app is robertoapp.com, named after Roberto Clemente. Fantastic stuff. Great to have him on on as part of the show, Bob. And so much more to get into about, you know, his playing days, you know, particularly in the NFL. Hopefully we get the privilege of having Gus back on the show again real soon. Yeah, terrific guy, Chris. And, again, uh, played for, I believe, seven different franchises, and we can uh, delve into that next time. 